Thank you very much. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. And yes, uh, I would like to share with you a couple of the things that we are working on right now uh, as we speak and um, the reasons for why I think that the next five to ten years will probably be the most exciting years in the automotive industry that I've witnessed and probably uh, you will be able uh, to witness as well. Um, where is the automotive industry right now? I know this is a digital life conference and the first image that I show is something very analog. Uh, but there is something uh, that um, we like still in this analog function. Uh, you understand what it does perfectly. It can only do one thing on or off. And it sort of represents where the car industry is at right now. Um, the other image, of course, stands for the digital uh, technology and all its possibilities, which are vast. Um, and that, too, is entering the car, but uh, not quite uh, pervasively. So we are sort of at the crossroads, you could say. Um, there's other things that are happening right now. Uh, a big debate uh, surrounding uh, autonomous drive. Um, you're very aware of that. Uh, and there are some companies uh, that have positioned themselves uh, as providers of autonomous drive only. And then there's us, uh, BMW Group, a company that is built on enjoying uh, the drive, uh, driving yourself. And probably many of you are hoping that that will continue too. So again, uh, we find ourselves at a crossroads. Maybe even in the industry at large, uh, we're at a crossroads because uh, we now see or begin to see or seem to see a battle between young, uh, fresh uh, entrepreneurs, startups, small companies that really believe that they will be able to change the world, and the old established uh, economy or industry, uh, almost 100 years old, um, that maybe is too slow uh, to pick up uh, the signs of change. So, uh, how uh, are we going to deal with it? Uh, I believe that um, BMW is probably the only company uh, that belongs uh, to this 100-year-old uh, group that has shown uh, that we can think and act and work like a startup. Um, we have done so in creating uh, cars like the i3 uh, or the i8. Um, this was uh, to deal with uh, a big challenge uh, that we saw uh, ahead of us, in the way of electric mobility. That too, uh, you could say, um, could be seen as a, as a real big challenge or threat uh, to our business. Uh, and we chose um, to deal with it head on. Uh, we chose to deal with it uh, in a way uh, that definitely uh, encompassed all our uh, expertises, um, most prominently also the design team. Uh, we were asked to create not just one car, two cars, um, and a whole brand and a whole new form language uh, that made that new type of technology understandable and attractive. So I believe that uh, in our company there is some indication that we will probably not get caught out uh, by things that are happening around us. Um, under the I brand, uh, we also started uh, dealing with uh, things outside of the car, outside of uh, mobility uh, as we know it. Uh, we've created something in the way of services around mobility, park now, drive now, a sharing service that many people here in Munich already know and, uh, and use. Um, so uh, we are already looking into things uh, that could definitely uh, change uh, the business model. Now, um, I showed you also uh, one of our more traditional cars, and uh, some of you have been in it already, I think, this morning. That car, even though it's uh, one of the more traditional products that we make, also, uh, by design, uh, is not that old-fashioned. Uh, the way you interact with the car, um, you can do it uh, with voice, with touch, and even with uh, gesture control. Um, you should try it. Uh, with that, I would say uh, we draw even uh, with what the consumer electronic industry has to offer. We are not no longer behind. But of course, um, it is maybe more interesting to you, also to me as a designer, um, to talk about what the future holds. Uh, and especially, of course, the future of interaction, the way you're going to uh, operate uh, the vehicle and everything in it. Um, we have shown only a week ago uh, this car uh, at uh, the Consumer Electronics Show uh, in Las Vegas. 
Uh, yes, it's a sports car, so once again, uh, we're dealing with the changes that are coming our way head-on uh, in a sports car, because uh, we don't want to give that up, and probably many of you uh, don't want to give up emotion in design either. So that is the first job that I believe we as a design team have, to uh, package all changes in a way uh, that uh, they become understandable, but also emotionally attractive. So we decided to deal with it in a sporty vehicle, an i8 Spider. The interior of this car uh, is, uh, I believe, quite revolutionary. It starts with the seats. Uh, it allows you uh, to move around in the seat uh, much more like you do uh, in a sofa. You can take various positions that allow you uh, to talk to your co uh, pilot or passenger, or uh, to enjoy uh, what is uh, on display in this very big screen. Um, the dashboard um, offers both possibilities. You can see it right away. You can still drive the car yourself or switch to auto mode and then enjoy um, a lot of other things uh, that you're quite familiar with from the digital world uh, in this uh, panorama screen. How does it all work? Um, uh, a little, uh, a small movie uh, can uh, probably show you uh, how the car is then integrated in your lives. Hey, BMW Connected. How's my day looking? Good morning, David. Your first meeting today will be at 9.30 downtown with Mr. Brannigan. Would you like to choose your driving options? Decker Canyon with the i8 will be a joyride this morning. Yes. Yes. Anything new in my inbox? You have one new mail and one call from Caroline Lang. Okay, please call Caroline. Hello, David. How are you? Hi, Caroline. Fine, thanks. Thanks for returning my call. I was calling about our campaign we were talking about last time. I sent you an email with the two possible headline press pictures. Is it possible for you to take a look at them right now? Sure, I'll switch us to video call. I'm in auto mode now. All right, I see your content. I guess option one would be a better fit for our main efficiency strategy. I think so too. I'll talk to the team and we'll move on with this. Thanks. We should go for lunch when I'm back in Munich next week. I see uh, Thursday could work. It does. Great, looking forward to it. And good luck for your meetings. Thank you. David, there's traffic ahead. To keep your estimated arrival time, I suggest leaving the highway at exit 5 for an alternative route downtown. Okay. See you later. I will be back here and pick you up at 11.
So you probably like that last bit uh, very much of waving uh, the hand and the car parks itself. Uh, that's actually a technology that we demonstrated in Las Vegas uh, on a real car. So this is a piece of technology uh, that is pretty close uh, to becoming a reality. All these other aspects in the movie uh, are pretty close too. We have yet uh, to put it all together uh, in the shape of one car. And of course, as a design team, uh, we are thinking ahead. Um, and um, typically, we are three to five to six years ahead of what is technically possible. But this is very much um, how we imagine uh, the future, a very clean-looking interior. And as you saw in the movie, there's a couple of things that are important to us. Uh, first of all, um, uh, the car or BMW will offer uh, a wide variety uh, of mobility choices uh, to the consumer. In the movie, um, the user selected, of course, the joyride um, because it was a beautiful day and he had an open car uh, to his disposal. But you could have chosen a motorcycle or a, a car sharing option. Uh, you will make that choice yourself and that's very important to us as a company. Uh, then, uh, during the drive, uh, of course, the car knows uh, what time of the day it is and where you are in your calendar if you uh, switch that on. And the car will then um, uh, help you uh, make the best decision um, according to your calendar, the route, of course, uh, and also um, allow uh, or not allow people to disturb you uh, while you're driving, while you're enjoying this drive. So very important to us will be that, yes, uh, the car will be able to drive autonomously, but you will uh, be able to decide uh, where and when. The uh, contact with our product, of course, begins outside of the car uh, on a consumer electronics device. Um, we as a design team, of course, would like to uh, design that part as well because we want to design the complete experience that then continues in the car. Uh, of course, exterior, interior design, all the color and materials, but certainly also what happens on screen. Uh, and then uh, the journey, of course, ends outside of the car. Uh, and um, again, uh, probably uh, on a consumer electronics device. So uh, we are working very hard right now, not just on what you expect us to do, the shape, uh, and I hope that I was able to, to show you that it will remain emotional. Uh, driving uh, is something that uh, we like and that most of our customers enjoy. Uh, we want to do a design that is authentic, that uh, shows then what kind of um, experience you can have with it. Uh, but we are going to make sure that it becomes a seamless experience. And uh, the digital part of my design team is indeed the fastest growing. So uh, we are doing a lot uh, to have that experience uh, also from a um, visual standpoint uh, be a seamless one. So uh, with that, um, in a very, very uh, short form or nutshell, uh, we believe we can offer in the near future uh, more convenience and safety. Uh, you will be able to make uh, uh, the most important choices yourself, uh, and that is um, whether you uh, want to drive or not, or whether you want to be online or not. Um, this integration will be seamless. It will take us uh, a bit more time, but the beginnings are there. Uh, it will change uh, the user experience, and we as a design team feel responsible for making that a beautiful experience. And uh, we believe that in that way, uh, we can deal with um, uh, any competitors that come new to the field. Uh, competition always uh, spurs us on. Uh, we've never shied away from it, and we are indeed uh, already uh, getting prepared uh, for these next big changes. Thank you very much. Well, thank you very much, Adrian, for the joy of that ride, also for the delight of the very colorful celebration yesterday at BMW Welt. I think you've proven with this uh, amazing presentation that at a time of ultimate disruption in the automotive sector, your 700-person design team is managing to ensure that BMW continues both to be efficient and exciting, to be uh, connected, and to be uh, defining the era of our time without really having to have any of the compromise that we hear so much about. I guess what I'd love to talk to you about is the competition and the landscape both for BMW as a company, but also for Germany as a country. We know we're in the home of the modern car, of course, de facto for the past hundred years. And what I'd love to ask you now as we sit here with one-sixth of the German workforce employed in the industry, maybe 40% of Europe's production here, what it means to be seeing the new kinds of competitors like Google, like Apple, like Uber, 
uh, perhaps like Faraday, if you believe the hype, how is this challenging you to push your design boundaries and uh, retain top talent? Well, I believe that, uh, I mean, I cannot speak for the whole of the industry, but I can uh, talk about how we at BMW Group want to deal with this. Um, there's always been competition uh, in the field of automotive uh, mobility. So um, we always had to work quite hard, actually, to offer the most emotional, most beautiful uh, types of experiences. Um, like I said before, I think the experience will now start outside of the car, uh, will continue inside the car, not just uh, by a tactical uh, or tactile uh, experience, also by a digital experience. And I believe um, uh, it will all come down to making all those experiences match. Um, new players will come into the field, for sure. That's become very clear. Um, they might be very good uh, in the digital aspect. They probably have a lot of experience there. Um, but uh, the car as a driving uh, environment uh, poses some uh, specific questions. Uh, and they will have to uh, uh, smarten up on those. So uh, we're coming at it from, from different uh, areas. It will be uh, a very, very exciting uh, time, I think, ahead. Yeah. I think it's exciting that at the recent uh, Consumer Electronics Summit in Las Vegas, there was as much of a headline devoted to the air touch digital nature of that design as to the new evolution of the seat. So it's interesting in terms of that prioritization both in you leading the teams across many Rolls-Royce and BMW, and for the customer, how that balance between the invisible and the visible plays out. Um, I guess it's interesting, in your 25 years, you have seen so much disruption. And mm. if we look at the car as the consumer product that really defines society best, we seem to think that we're living in an unprecedented time of evolution. Yet you have Peter Thiel saying, you know what, we wanted the flying car and we got 140 characters. Can you give us an insight into whether this time it's really different from your perspective? I think so. I mean, how quick we will get to a flying car, I, I cannot uh, say, but um, I really uh, have seen now uh, the first indications of bigger change that is not going to go away. Uh, I've worked uh, in car design for almost 25 years. It has never been boring, but uh, I think now with uh, changes in drivetrain, uh, changes in uh, business model, as in owning versus sharing the car, changes in the way you operate the vehicle, and uh, a whole array of new uh, players in the field. I think this is the biggest amount of change that I've seen in the last couple of years, and I do believe that uh, design or the overall experience will uh, be the key factor uh, as to how uh, this technology becomes meaningful. Now, living in Hong Kong, it's very exciting to watch what's happening in Shanghai and to see how both uh, your team and your audience is becoming so globalized. I wonder, in terms of the tastes and the consumer trends, the artist Ai Weiwei once told me that the world is a sphere, there is no east and west. I wonder, when you look at the tastes of your consumers, if you find they are diverging or converging as the demand for BMW becomes so globalized. I would say that in the, in the premium uh, end of the market, they are converging. Um, I travel a lot, and so do our customers. Uh, we do have design teams, of course, in Shanghai and in Los Angeles, uh, and a, a rather large one here in Munich. Um, but um, I see that in the premium uh, sector that um, our customers know uh, what uh, is available to them uh, around the world. So um, we are maybe in a lucky uh, situation that our design um, needs to appeal uh, or can appeal uh, globally. Uh, but you do, of course, need to be aware of what people want to do with these cars, and that can uh, differ uh, across countries. Now, in my final question, I will save you the duty of being the anthropologist or the futurologist that you're so often asked to be in terms of asking what's going to happen ahead. Um, I'd love to turn to your museum, which so many of us had the pleasure of visiting yesterday and which I learned is actually the second most visited mu museum in Munich after the Pinakothek. Uh, it's fascinating to see the history defined there, and I'd love to ask you, which is the object in there that most inspires you, and what are you most excited about putting in next? Um, there's actually some objects that I was able uh, to select myself to put in there. Uh, one is a motorcycle. Uh, that's how BMW actually started, building motorcycles. There's something I find very beautiful and simple uh, to the design, also the technology, uh, because there was not much more in the way of technology then. Uh, riding a motorcycle is something that is really nice to do because you can be offline for a while. Uh, at least uh, that's the case today. Uh, the other thing that I like a lot there is a concept vehicle. 
uh, called Vision Efficient Dynamics, which was the precursor or the card that led to the I-8. And with the I-8, I think we set the first steps uh, in a new world, uh, showing that even a sports car uh, can have a very different drivetrain and uh, a very different form language that doesn't um, quote any of the traditional sports car elements. Thank you so much. It's been such a pleasure speaking with you, and thank you for continuing to help us drive forward the evolution of our car design. Thank Do you, Do my best. Thank you very much. Thank you.